Welcome back to this week in Missouri Politics. We are joined by two guys who, one represents the Boot Hill, Jason Bean from Peach Orchard. Welcome to the show, sir. Glad to be here. Thank and you. And the other, Senator Greg Razor, who represents Kansas City but has Cooter, Missouri roots. Tell folks where Cooter is. Cooter is the most southeastern town in the state of Missouri. Uh, it's about a mile north of Arkansas, a mile west of Tennessee. Now, tell folks where Peach Orchard is. Peach Orchard is kind of right in the middle of the actual Boot Hill. Yep. Uh, you know, about 15 minutes to Tennessee, about 10 minutes to Arkansas, 25 minutes from Illinois and Kentucky, just they're, right there in the middle. Yeah, they're way up north. I'm just <laughs> on the fringe. You take you take Missouri's Main Street, Highway 67 down to pop up and you make a right and go to the M Highway and you get to Strangtown. I like to call it, you know, the, the fashionable, probably cultural center of the Boot Hill, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, Peach Orchard, I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about Medicaid. So folks voted, voted up to do Medicaid expansion. The House and now the Senate has chosen not to, to fund the program. There's some technical issues that, that probably you can hang your hat on. End of the day, how does this end? Well, I think it's probably going to go to the courts, and mm -hmm. uh, we will see how the court rules, and, and we'll go from there. Um, you know, talking about the Boot Hill 25th District, uh, pretty much voted Medicaid expansion down, pretty mm -hmm. much two to one. So uh, we watched what the House did, came over, and, um, you know, that's where we are. Walk well, folks through, if you're... Uh, if you're thinking about this, there are folks, if it went, the, the magnitude that went down in the boot heel, there are folks that would have qualified for Medicaid, that voted against it. Do you think they didn't know they qualified? Do you think they just didn't want it? What is that mindset of, is it just, you don't want to go government, you don't think it's worth it? I think there was some of that, um, absolutely. Um, but I think we've got to just work through the process. Mm. Um, I think that one thing that has kind of come out that we need to, to make light of is through some federal money coming out of Washington, D.C., that people, you know, Medicaid is at 133, 133% of poverty level. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some provisions coming out of D.C. that they're going to be, at, you can do 150% under Silver Care with Obamacare right now. And I think it's kind of a, a good uh, point they can be for a couple of years till we get this uh, Medicaid expansion worked out. So it looks to me like it goes to the courts. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, you've got a Lowell Pearson, Chuck Hatfield, going to represent uh, folks wanting Medicaid expansion. Let's say they win. And the, and this, the, the court says fund it. You've set aside $500 million. Do, do you fund it? Do you think there'll be some Republicans in the House that say, no, we're not going down that road? What happens? Oh, I think if the courts say we fund it, we fund it. Let's be sure that we know who we're talking about when we're talking about Medicaid expansion. Uh, there are folks like us in this state that are either wealthy enough to buy private health insurance or work for a company that can provide it. The poorest of the poor in our state already get Medicaid mm -hmm. expansion, or already get Medicaid. The expansion is for that, the people caught in that gap that don't make enough money or work for a company that provides health insurance but aren't poor enough to qualify for Medicaid. This is for the clerk at the Casey's General Store who's working 40 hours a week uh, who might need to go to the doctor like we all do. Uh, that's the people that we're trying to expand Medicaid for. This is working folks that deserve to have health insurance. End of the day, my God, I watched the amendment in the Senate get debated on the budget. I feel like there won't be a political price for Republicans for this. No. You span it. I don't, do you feel? No. What do you think? And I think it's maybe due to priorities, right? There's just priorities that are higher than Medicaid for, for voters, although they might support it. I, I, it feels to me like at, at the time, voters supporting it gave Republicans an out. They couldn't be for it. Because it but if the public voted for it, they could go along. I didn't really see it coming where they didn't fund it at the General Assembly. Did you see that coming? It, I, I thought that the Senate would do the right thing and that we would get it in there and hold our position. Um, I, I was a little surprised, uh, but I think we'll be coming back this fall and we'll take care of it then. <laughs> it, seems like there's a, it seems like it's heading that way. Let's talk about something that, that everybody does. The folks that drove from Kansas City, where they come from the Boot Hill, is highways. The Senate has moved a, a kind of creative gas tax with a rebate and all kinds of bells and whistles. Uh, it's interesting in the House, obviously, that's got some opposition. Do you think that the Senate will hold their ground and say, if you don't move this priority for us, we won't move that priority for you? Or will this be another year where the roads just take a back seat? I hope this is the year we get it done. We haven't raised the fuel tax in the state of Missouri since 1996, which is the year I graduated from high school. It's been a quarter of a century. We're asking the Department of Transportation to maintain our infrastructure on the same amount of money that we gave them a quarter of a century ago. Uh, it, it's time, nobody likes paying more fuel tax at the sure. pump, but somebody's gotta pay for it. And I think it's a pretty conservative position to say we're gonna pay for what we want and we all want better roads and bridges. What happens? I mean, I, obviously there's support for this in the Senate. You guys got it through. Mm -hmm. 
Are you, do you think your colleagues are willing to tell the House, well, if you can't get our priorities through, then we can't get yours through? You know, I'm a freshman senator, so uh, I'm, I'm definitely, this is, Definitely these last two weeks have been very interesting to me. And uh, in fact, I was over in the House chamber kind of watching some proceedings yesterday and people are coming up to me, talk to me about the gas tax, what do you think about it? So it's definitely on the radar of everybody. And uh, you know, I was, a, I was uh, probably a little bit, probably wasn't quite there on passing the fuel tax because I'm not into raising taxes. I just don't believe in it. But when that South Carolina model came in, it really made me think um, and um, so I think that's going to be a big, big player is looking at that refund that you can get into it. And so going back to your question, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of jockeying going on with this and a lot of pressure being put on. I just don't know how much. Do you think that'll be the priority of the Senate the last week is getting that done or will there be other stuff? Uh, you know, I think it's it's definitely the uh, president pro tems. It's, it's his bill. He's uh, well, he's really done a good job with this consistently pushing this. Right. I mean, he that's and pro tems a tough job. This is one issue he's done a really good job, I think. Nobody could have taken it as far as he has. If he doesn't get it done, he's probably done the best job that anybody could pushing as far as it's yeah, got. Yeah, he's done a good job. And, and you know, I, I, I sat on the Transportation Committee and uh, watched that bill come through. You know, nobody really came to oppose it. There was 31 people that came to speak in favor of that bill. Let's talk about uh, education. We'll talk about higher ed first. You know, I have heard somewhere that you might be a supporter of a certain college in Columbia. I, I might be, yes, yes. <laughs> even the tie you have on right even now. The, even the tie, yeah. So uh, we're at Mizzou, I felt like, sometimes struggles in the house, but this year when the budget was all said and done, pretty good year for the Tigers. You know, when it, when it comes to the budget, so for the first time in a long time, 20-some-odd uh, years, we've given core increase funding mm -hmm. to all of our universities. Uh, the University of Missouri system, and remember that when we do the budget, it's for the four-campus sure. system. Uh, it was a $15 million core increase. $10 million of that is designated to the Next Gen Precision Medical Center, uh, which if people aren't familiar with it, please Google that because, I mean, th this has the potential of finding a cure for cancer. I mean, it's... Yeah. it's right here in Missouri. Right here in Missouri. It, it's fantastic. That leaves $5 million to split between the other four campuses, which mm -hmm. is not equal to what every other uh, campus got in the state. Uh, so while I think at first glance it appears that Mizzou and the UM system won in the budget, I think we still have a lot of work to do to catch them up to where other schools need to be. Now, it was an abashedly good year for community colleges, which you have several in your neck of the mm -hmm. woods that folks go to and serve with Southeast Missouri. That is something that I think is very underrated about how big of a role that is in a lot of the jobs you can get in the boot heel really required maybe that community college degree more than a degree you could get at SEMO. Oh, I mean, Three Rivers has done a great job. Um, Dr. Payne, they really yeah. done it. They have really, I'm, I'm very proud of Three Rivers and what we've done. Uh, I'm, I'm an MU grad as well. So uh, yeah, to me, the, the budget uh, was, a, was a pretty big win for me. I, I was happy to see those numbers and uh, very happy with our funding um, with Mizzou and like I say, what we've done at Three Rivers as well. Let's talk about, the, let's talk about another, move on down a little bit to K through 12. The, the Senate has sent the House a gas tax proposal. The House has sent the Senate a, I'm not exactly sure all the details of it, but an education reform thing. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, uh, I guess, in the House have decided that's their priority. I'm never really sure if the Senate, if they're going to make that theirs or not. Is there a piece of the school reform that you could support or that you find more palatable than other things? You know, I think what has to happen, and this has become one of those issues, almost like abortion, that you're on one side or the mm -hmm. other and, and never can you compromise. I think we all need to understand that there are some public schools that are struggling. Yeah. Uh, and it might not be the fault of the teachers and the administrators. Sure. Perhaps it's the societal issues that are going on around that school. And how can we find ways to help those schools and to help those families and most importantly, help those kids? I'm not sure that giving public dollars to uh, religious schools is going to be the answer, uh, but I am very willing to open up and say, okay, how can we help? How can we make sure that every kid, whether you're in the inner city of Kansas City or you're in Pemiscott County, has the ability to go as far as he or she is able to go? And whether that is, you know, going to Three Rivers, going to Metropolitan Community College, going to SEMO or UCM, going to Mizzou, I want to make sure that our kids can go as far as they possibly can. So I've, I've just never seen, now you've traveled the Boot Hill more than I have, but I have never went and seen a Dexter Bearcat want a charter school. 
No. Matter of fact, I think they want the St. Louis folks to leave them alone. I mean, you know, the 25th district, if you look at it, I'm so fortunate. Mm -hmm. Got some great, great schools. Um, they really do a great job. I mean, from Van Buren to Eminence to, to Kennett to Holcomb, just really, really good schools in our area. Twin Rivers, you mentioned that earlier. Well, I'm not uh, a fan of Twin Rivers personally. I'm a Neelyville Tiger, but that's our sworn enemy. But yes, I take your point. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate. Now, I do know there are some children that definitely suffer here in the state of Missouri, and I understand sure. that. So I think if we can potentially look at a potential compromise, I know uh, in my district, uh, I hear a lot about transportation funding. We've got some definite problems that uh, a lot of schools are very underfunded, underfunded on transportation. Um, so maybe if we can somehow come out with a compromise, I think that could be really the old good. yellow dog, 45 minutes one way from Strangton and Neatherville, every day, back and forth. But at the end of the day, have you ever heard of Malden Greenway come up and say, I'd sure like a St. Louis genius to come down here and mess with Malden schools. No. <laughs> at the end of the day, is there going to be a St. Louis genius come down to Malden and mess with the Green Wave? You know what, if you don't believe that uh, schools are important to their communities, come to the Boot Hill yeah. on a Friday night during basketball season and go yep. in that gym. Yep. First of all, you're going to walk in there and it's going to be about 90 degrees because it is packed with people. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, they come out, they support their community. Um, and, and we've got that all across the Boot Hill. I mean, everywhere. We're very, very fortunate to have that. And, and no, when you mentioned charter school in the Boot Hill. Um, they don't know what you're talking about. No. But they, they don't want it. It, it, yeah, one of the two. So, well, so let's make some predictions here. Uh, give me a piece of legislation that's going to pass that maybe uh, you think uh, be underrated or, or isn't really at the top of the headlines right now. Uh, I think we're going to get name, image, and likeness, uh, putting the Olympic model into the Doesn't NCAA. That makes sense? It, it makes total well, sense. So what that means is if you ever played Madden on, on Nintendo or whatever, the, the players for college are always just their numbers. You kind of know. They would have Brad Smith. I'm, I'm old enough that Brad Smith was the Missouri quarterback when I first started playing college football, mm -hmm. whatever the Madden version of that was. He could run and throw pretty well like Brad Smith, and he had the number of Brad Smith, but he didn't say Brad Smith's name. That makes so much sense. It's Jay's name, and Brad Smith, you get a cut of that, right? Well, and also think of it as, I, I like to use the example of Mary Lou Retton. Yeah. You know, she never got paid to go be a, a gymnast, but she was able to monetize uh, her fame to get on the Wheaties box. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this does. Now, maybe a, a player at, at Mizzou or SEMO never gets on the Wheaties box, but maybe they're advertising for Shakespeare's Pizza. I don't care. That, sure. I mean, why not make a little money? Um, and, and I think that's going to get done this year. It just seems conservative that if you want to make a living some way, the mm -hmm. government will leave you alone. At the end of the day, I think the bigger picture, there's different schools in the SEC that are doing this. And if you're going to be in the SEC, you've got to keep up. And if you're a, if you're Coach Drinkwitz, and you're trying to recruit a guy, and he, one guy can be on the video game if he goes to one school, and the other school, he's going to be 80, his receiver be 85. That's a competitive disadvantage. Do you think that can get done this year? I don't know. I'm uh, I'm a little more old school, so I've got to do a little. Uh, I got to do a little more research on this to uh, to get there. But we're going to uh, work I'm, on it. I'm thinking. So. End of the day, can Mizzou be competitive if other SEC schools are doing this and they don't? Can they compete? If we don't get this passed ever, yeah. no. But why in the world would a kid yeah. that's playing in Florida not go to the University of Florida where he can make a little extra money? Why would he come to Mizzou where he can't make anything? Uh, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, these states have already done it. Uh, if we don't get it done this year, Coach Drink is not going to be able to recruit for a season or two. It is always weird to me when Republicans come up with ways to get the government involved in people's lives when they talk all the time about getting government out of people's lives. Yep. Give the government out of these kids' lives. Leave them alone. Absolutely. And in your earlier segment, we finally got public defenders uh, funded, uh, which is a big deal. Another another way that, that finally we're, we're helping out people. Well, it was a big deal. Vanessa, I mean, when you ordered that budget, you'd be kind of proud that you are actually keeping your commitment and funding the public defenders, giving folks a fair shot. Absolutely. All right. Senator uh, Jason Bean from the Boot Hill down in Pete, Georgia. Tell your brother, I said hi if you don't mind. Thank you Good. for joining us. Greg Razor, all the way from Cooter to Kansas City, now State Senator, and, and thank you for joining us. Hope you come back after the session. We'll talk a little politics, a little U.S. Senate race. Yeah. You know a thing or two about U.S. Senate and U.S. Senate I races. I hope I you do. come back and we'll, we'll get to chew the fat on that uh, maybe sometime this summer over in Kansas City. I look forward to it.